Hello, and thanks for stopping by. As you watch this, I will have completed and posted online all 27 films shot during 2018 for the 25th anniversary celebrations of The Solitary Rambler. I felt it would now be really nice to look back and reflect over the years, as well as looking to the future. The Solitary Rambler began in August 1993, when I was living in Bristol, and were very different films to the kind I make nowadays. The very first films were shot in Monmouthshire and around the Wye Valley in Forest of Dean. They featured friends of mine, as well as me, and were more like a series of one hour plays as opposed to the 20 minute films about walks that I make completely on my own today. My friend Richard was my cameraman in the beginning, but he made a few appearances in front of the camera too. I can possibly know what's happened. Simple, he's never met you, but he knows me. Tomorrow morning, before you set off, can you come round? We need to talk privately about something. My friend Michael was the main actor in my films, along with myself. Oh, hell. About where I started. Did you ever do anything as a dare? Or something you were forbidden to do? And over the following few years, more of my friends were taking part, including Nigel. Just because I was having more fun than you were. I could just as easily be leading this walk. Jenny. Try it! The solitary rambler. Scott. Everything is fine now. What do you think we should do with him then, Clayton? Martin. You drank a real belly full. Of course, this silly sod had to walk back along the darkest way possible, didn't he? Clayton. You'll be expecting me to turn up as well. Boys, 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 enough of this. We don't have the time. Isabel. He must have drunk hell of a lot. I can't wake him up. That gets you off the hook, doesn't it? And Anthony. You've never heard of the Sotter Rambler? You haven't got any cornflakes, have you, Mike? Even my mum made a few appearances. I walked along those catwalks before the bridge was completed. When I edited the first six films, I added Avon Lee Productions in the opening titles. That was because, at that time, Richard, Nigel and I were all living in Avon Lee Road in Bristol, so Avon Lee Productions seemed an appropriate name for the solitary rambler team. From the seventh film onwards, however, I dispensed with the Avonlea Productions title and added my name and other regular cast members in the titles instead. Even though we spent some long days filming out on location, which could be pretty tiring, my friends and I had a lot of fun making the films. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> I felt an enormous sense of. That's it with me, don't you? Well, assuming I've read this map correctly, we should be at the Staple Edge bungalows. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> that was him! Yeah. Wasn't me! <laughs> That's a I damn thought the camera done. vibrate. <laughs> now, come on. Stop the laughing right. as possible. Poor Batteries go. Oh, God. <laughs> Talk about smoke and peace. According to... Oh, God. Oh, dear. Right, okay, then. <laughs> there used to be a door over there. Yeah, he bloody shot it. It's brown now. He shot it into splinters. <laughs> Pebble dash there, bungalow. <laughs> By 2002, I had made nine one-hour films, and I was looking forward to making more. In 2003, however, everything changed. In January 2003, I moved from Bristol to Matlock in Derbyshire. I still wanted to carry on making my films, but it was going to be a lot more difficult with me now living 150 miles or so away from my friends in Bristol. Although I gradually made new friends in Matlock, I didn't really find anyone who I felt would want to take part in my films. So, that looked like the end of the solitary rambler. In June 2003, I received the very sad news that my friend Richard, who had been involved in my earliest films, had passed away. I travelled back to Bristol to attend his funeral. It was a very sad time for all of us, and I still miss him today.
By 2005, I had purchased a new camcorder, which now came fitted with new LCD screens, which meant that I could see and film myself without the need of a cameraman. In September that year, I made my first film completely on my own, which was in Pembrokeshire. It was also the first of the documentary style films that I continue to make today. Despite being completely different in style to all my previous films, I found that it worked quite well, so I decided to make a few more films over the following 12 months. One was largely shot in the Ellen Valley. I had any feelings around at all. She was just somebody who was bubbly and a good laugh. Uh, also held some deeper meaning. One took me back down to the Y Valley in Forest of Dean to make what was going to be the final film in that area, hence its title. Another was the first film in the area in which I was now living, the Peak District. Two years later, I bought another new camcorder, this time equipped with an internal hard disk, which meant not having to buy tapes anymore, as well as an improvement on the picture quality. I only made one film with this camcorder, which was in and around Matlock, where I had been living for the past five years. In the southeast corner of the Peak District, and the hustle and bustle of Matlock's busy street. Later on that same year, I met my partner, so priorities in my life changed considerably. However, after we went our separate ways in 2012, I looked to start making films again. By early 2013, I had bought yet another new camcorder, this time with the ability to record in HD. I went out during March and April of that year to make my first HD quality film, which was in the Peak District around the Manifold Valley and the Roaches. I didn't work on the editing until several months later, but that didn't stop me going out in May that year to shoot another film in HD, which I was very excited about, as it was my very first film in the Lake District. Forget about my everyday life. In September 2013, I had a new girlfriend, and I spent a huge amount of my time with her. The relationship only lasted a few months, sadly, and it was after it had ended that I finally got around to editing my Lake District film. I then started to look to making shorter length films, as by this time YouTube had been around for a few years, and I felt that I could share my films online, and I thought that everybody would be more likely to watch if my films weren't too long. In April 2014, I went out to shoot my first shorter length film, which was along Baslow, Kerber and Froggart Edges in the Peak District. It proved to be a very long day as I was out there to begin filming before 8 in the morning and by the time I was finished it was nearly 7 in the evening. Despite the fact that I had also walked for nearly 12 miles, I felt that the shorter length films would give me more flexibility as I could spend just one day shooting a film. Therefore, during the following month, I made a further four short films in other locations in the Peak District. The format was working for me, and I soon discovered that I didn't need to walk as much as 12 miles, or spend as long as 11 hours a day shooting for one film. One of my brothers was getting married in June of that year. I was invited to the wedding, which was in Cheltenham, so I booked a couple of nights accommodation in a nearby Premier Inn. A thought then came to me. I could take my camcorder with me and then go into the nearby Cotswolds to shoot a film. So that's exactly what I did. This was where I realised the shorter length films were giving me greater flexibility as I could spend a day anywhere to shoot a film. Therefore, the following month, I booked a night's accommodation in a travel lodge in Ludlow. So I spent the first day filming in the Malvern Hills and the second in Shropshire. Now, if memory serves me, I am Bridges a beautiful place. I was becoming more and more enthusiastic about making short films in different places. 
By the end of 2014, I had made 16 20-minute films, nine locally in the Peak District, one in the Cotswolds, one in the Malvern Hills, one in Shropshire, and four in the Yorkshire Dales. That is pretty impressive, isn't it? I found it a very exciting time, so I planned to do more over the following years, whilst I was still single and had plenty of time to myself. The following year, I made more in the Peak District, as well as heading into the South Pennines, Lancashire, is an absolute delight. The North York Moors are no. And Snowdonia. You see me. By the end of 2015, I was in full swing of making 20-minute films, and I was getting more viewers and followers on YouTube. Comments from viewers were generally very positive. People were enjoying my films. I was even starting to receive suggestions as to where I could make future films. During 2016, I went to Keswick for a week, where I shot more films in the Lake District. I also decided to film in a couple of locations that had been suggested to me. Places I'd never even heard of until then. And I have to say, I felt I reached the top of my game with one or two of those films. In 2017, I decided to head back down south and make films in and around Bristol and North Somerset, as well as other locations like the Quantock Hills, the road, the A39, Exmoor, well, I don't claim to know Exmoor well. The North Wessex Downs. It starred John Pertwee. The Cotswolds again. Going, ah! And Dartmoor. Well, I've had a nice little look around Shagford. Then 2018 was approaching. I had actually planned well in advance for this year, as it was going to be 25 years since the very first film was made, much of which had been shot in Wentwood in Monmouthshire. So I planned to return to Wentwood to make a 25th anniversary film to mark the occasion. I also decided that the other films I wanted to shoot in 2018 would be back in the Wye Valley in Forest of Dean, where most of my early hour-long films were made so all of the year's films would be part of celebrating the 25th anniversary. It turned out to be a great year, probably my favourite year of filming. This is the Forest of Dean. Just been talking to a lovely old guy. Good morning. Oh, let's do it. Let's just get on with it. What a wonderful spot to end my day. Do I need to give a reason? Shaking trees with long poles. So, what next? Well, I did tell myself that once the anniversary films were completed, I would really like to take a break from filmmaking, simply because of the amount of work involved. My filmmaking is very enjoyable, but I can't deny that it's also a huge commitment. I work full time, and the filmmaking takes up a lot of my spare time. During the past few years, I've booked most of my annual leave from work to go out filming. 
Many of my regular YouTube viewers have made some lovely comments as to how much they appreciate the work involved in what I do. But there are other people that, when you read their comments, clearly have no idea at all as to the amount of work I put into the films. But then in all fairness, I wouldn't expect them to. If you've watched my introduction to the Solitary Rambler video, you may recall I said, where well, I'll go on a walk, take the camera with me, and film as I go. Hmm. I didn't really word that very well, to be honest. I don't actually just go on a walk and film as I go. I go out to make a film of a walk. There's quite a difference. For example, a five mile walk that may take, say, two hours to do, will probably take me nearly three times as long because I'm constantly stopping to set the camera up and shoot scenes. And I'm not really fully appreciating the walk because I'm constantly thinking about what scenes I'm going to shoot next. In the shots where I walk in front of the camera, I set the camcorder on the tripod, walk into position, and then walk back to record the shot I want. Quite often, I have to do more than one take, so by the end of the day, I will have walked an extra mile or two in addition to the five miles of the walk itself. When I'm talking to the camera, it's not uncommon for me to fluff my lines so I normally have to shoot many retakes until I get it right. But one day I would like to come back and see more of the... But I would like to come back one day and see more of it. I mean, let's be honest, it would be rude of me not to revisit. Sometimes things happen beyond my control that cause me to shoot several retakes. But just around that corner is the tunnel that was used in the film. And just before that, to the left is where the trees slid down the embankment as part of the earth. Well, just behind me is one of the main locations of the film of the railway children. Just around the. Oh, you. Sadly, I can't quite see from here, but around that corner. That... On average, I spend about six to seven hours a day filming a walk. And that's not counting the travel times to the location from home or from where I'm staying and then back again. So it can be a very long day. One example is when I went out a couple of years back to film the walk around Burnley and the singing ringing tree. I got up at 5.30 that morning, left home at 6 to drive to Burnley, which was about 70 miles and took about two hours. And filming began once I arrived there about 8 that morning. Once the walk was over and filming finished at around 2 that afternoon, I then made the two hour, 70 mile drive back home. Then there's the editing of all the captured footage. The research of the places featured along the walk. Writing the narration from my research material. The recording of the narration, originally constructed of local old re I crossed the old Y bridge originally constructed of old... Oh, I, <laughs> and the best part of all, composing and recording a musical soundtrack. Oh. And it doesn't stop there, as I then update my website for each film which includes writing up background information, creating maps, and inserting saved images from the films, as well as posting updates on Facebook and Twitter. So yeah, a huge amount of work. The anniversary year, for example, was a massive project. 27 films in one year was a lot. So in the end, it was no real surprise that work on the post-production was spread across two years. Then there's the cost of travel and accommodation to film those walks that are further away from home. Again, 2018 in particular was an expensive year with fuel costs as well as many nights accommodation in the Wye Valley and Forest of Dean throughout the year. One more thing I should perhaps mention is that although I describe the routes of my walks as well as now providing online maps of the routes, I don't intentionally make my films to be guided walks they are mini-movies of my personal journeys in the countryside. So I'm sure you can understand why I'd love a break from filmmaking. I won't stop completely, as there's always summer I'd like to film. 
I can tell you I've done a little bit of filming this year, but I didn't start until work on last year's films was nearly done. I'm very slowly working on a small project at the moment, but once that's done, I may go out to make the odd film as and when, probably closer to home too. We'll see. I'm just not going to commit myself, that's all. I promise I won't disappear completely though. Thanks again to all of you who have been watching and for all your kind comments. It's always much appreciated and that makes all the work I do much more worthwhile.